Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, welcome to the video for what is get component velocity. Let me go ahead and run our quick little example, and I'll run it a couple times and I'll show you what's going on. We have a blueprint array here. We have a individual cube by itself, which is falling, and then we have a blueprint which consists of a cube and two spheres and when this runs we get a component velocity value and you'll notice it's settled now but when we run it the z will be going down up and down and it represents this cube here you'll also notice the actor velocity doesn't do anything so let's go ahead and look at the nodes itself the node is pretty simple get component velocity it's basically going to return back the velocity of the component or roughly the speed at which this component is moving and in which direction it's moving. And it usually only works properly if it has physics enabled. If you are attached to something else that doesn't have physics, such as a character movement, then it should work fine. In this example, we're going to show you using just physics. We're going to use gravity and just drop it down. Now I'm targeting the cube like I mentioned, and that cube is just this individual cube. But this cube has different settings in it than the spheres, and I'm basically simulating a lighter object. So the item falls at a separate speed. So you'll notice, even though these spheres hit the ground, the cube takes longer, and you'll notice its individual settings like that. Now the other item we have there, I am getting the velocity of the entire item, the entire actor using the get velocity node. If you notice, nothing's hooked up. Well, there's a reason for that. If we look at our blueprints, we'll notice we have a root scene component, but a root scene component has no physics. It has nothing enabled on it. Therefore, the actor has basically no value for velocity. If I was to take this sphere collision and then put it as a parent, you'll notice this one does have physics. Now, when we run our example, watch the two values. The actor will come to a rest before the component. We can run that again. It's because the actor is a different entity than the component itself, and our component has different values in it. Let's go ahead and stop this. Let's turn our dampening up more. We'll go ahead and play this again. You'll notice the cube falls even more. It takes even longer. We can even exaggerate that dramatically by going to six. We'll run this again. You notice how it took a lot longer and it has a lot different physics reactions, a lot less bounces until it drops. Just because the actor itself, which is this entire blueprint component, stopped moving doesn't mean the individual components stopped moving. And that's why there is a get component velocity node. This allows you to hit any individual component, so our sphere, our sphere, or our cube, and determine the velocity on it and then return back the value as a vector. Now, of course, it's going to return back the value as a vector, which means if it's moving in the x, y, or z, positive or negative, we're going to get back those values. In this case, I'm only moving down. That's why we see a value going down. If I was to move up, we'd see a positive z value. If I was moving left or right, we're going to see a value in those directions as well. So that's pretty much it. That is our get component velocity node. Targets a scene component. It's going to return back a vector that's an x y and a z and it's going to be positive or negative on the x y or z based on the velocity or the approximation of a speed that this item is moving remember it needs to target something with physics if it targets something without physics it's simply not going to return back a value because there is no value to return